So I'm going to show you a little system, and first I'll show you the runtime behavior. What we have here is a list of labs, so this is a drop-down list, where I can pick a lab, I can actually see how many available spaces are here, right now there's one space available, and then I can sign up someone for this lab. Okay. So I'm going to sign um, myself to this lab. And you say when I click register, I get a message that I've been added to the event, and I go to this page. All right. Now let's go back and register as another person to the same lab, which now has zero spaces. So we're going to register Julie. And note what happens now when we click register. We get a warning message that we are on a waitlist and navigate to the same page. Um, I'll show you something else if you look actually at the data that we have here. So let's look at the business services or business object that we created here. So we added um, items into the person field or person object. In the person object we have two fields that are of interest. One of them is this reference to the lab object and the other one is this boolean field that indicates if someone is waitlisted. If we actually look at the data, and we'll scroll to the end of the data, okay. here are our two records that we just added, and you can see that Julie has the true field, or true value, in the waitlisted field. Okay, So we also changed one property here. So now let's go back to the page and look at the logic behind our register button. So we'll go to the register page. And here's the list that we're picking from. Okay, so um, this one is based on this um, list of value field. Okay, and then we click the register button. And let's look at the action for the register button. All right. So, what we have here first is a call to some custom code, and we'll go into details about what the custom code does, but in general what it does is it checks if we have enough space for someone to register for the lab. Um, if uh, successfully we validated that the person can register and there is enough space, we're going to save the person and then notifying that he has been added to the event and navigate to the thank you page. If on the other hand we fail the validation, okay, we're going to show a warning message with the message that the person has been waitlisted, still saving the data and navigating to the thank you page. Okay. So now let's look at the actual code that we have here. So this is a little bit of JavaScript code that does a few things for us. We'll make it a little bigger so you can see what's going on. So we start by getting a pointer to the lab entity. Again, this is kind of the referenced entity that we have in the person uh, entity. And then we take the ID of that um, lab, and then we construct a condition. Okay? It's a simple condition that checks that the ID is equal to the value that is currently in the combo box for the person. Okay, so this is the combo box that is on the page. I actually got this value. I can show you how easy it is to get this expression in here. All you need to do is expand the person fields, take the combo box and click on it, and the value will come over here. Okay. So we created a condition checking if the lab, or basically to make sure that we pick up the lab, with the same ID of the lab that we chose in the list of value. Then we're going to actually operate and do a read from this entity. Okay, um, Looking to the entity, using the condition, doing a read, and then we're going to see if this operation was successful, and if it was, we're going to look at the actual value of the capacity field and the registered field. Those are two fields in the lab object that indicate how much space we have. If it's smaller than one, it means that we don't have space. Okay. And if we don't have space, what we're doing here is we are setting the value 
of the wait listed field. Again, how did I get to this one? If I go over here and I click the wait listed, I'll get the get value, which basically returns the value of this field. I can very simply switch this to be set and then provide the actual value that I want to have after this. Okay, so this is what you actually have in the next line of code. And then we are going to return from this function with a reject operation. Basically meaning that the check for space failed and that we don't have space. So we set a value and then we return false and then we show the error message saying you're on the waitlist. Otherwise we're going to return with the resolved solution which basically means that the validation passed and we continue with the success flow. Over here we have one more catch which is in case that the operation of a query didn't work which is very unlikely in our state we're going to again uh, return in the reject mode while popping up a message saying that it didn't work. So this is basically how we uh, created this conditional flow working through relationships in our object.